How's it going guys? Before we start our video today, I just want to remind you guys that I have a Patreon and on my Patreon I offer services like mock interviews to help you guys prepare for your interviews as well as a Discord channel where you guys can discuss any kind of interview question you guys have seen at companies or just ask me any kind of questions that you guys have about interviews in general. So if you guys are interested in that kind of thing, uh, check the link in the description and I hope to see you guys there. Okay guys, today we're going over a problem called max area of island. And so if you guys have seen my number of islands video, it's super similar. I basically showed in that video how a basic template can help solve any kind of DFS or BFS problem. So you might notice and recognize that this problem is super similar, but nonetheless, it's being asked by Google right now, so it's a good question to know. Our problem description says, given a non-empty 2D array grid of zeros and ones, an island is a group of ones representing land connected four directionally. So meaning like top, left, bottom, and right. And you may assume that all four edges of the grid are surrounded by water. And we're basically asked to find the maximum area of an island in the given 2D array. And if there is no island, meaning the matrix is just a bunch of zeros, we would return zero as a maximum area. So if this is, if this is our example, we're actually gonna return uh, six because we have one, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so they just say here as a note, basically, we're not going to return 11 because we're not considering diagonals. Uh, because again, we can only connect islands above, below, to the left, or to the right of any given cell. And so I like to think about this problem personally as a real life scenario. So just imagine, you know, like the sea, and now there's a bunch of islands kind of scattered throughout the sea. What we want to do is we want to find an island first, somehow find it, right? So we need to iterate through our entire matrix. So let's find an island. And then what we want to do is we want to try and sync that entire island, okay? And so what we're going to do basically is we're going to visit a cell when we find an island. So if something's a one, we're going to run a DFS on it. And the reason for that is because we want to sync all of the neighboring cells around the cell that we're on. And every, sing every single time we sync a cell, we want to account for that, right? So we can actually count the maximum area of any island we encounter. So now let's say we found one island up here and it only encapsulates a part of the matrix when we sync it, we make sure that, let's say, you know, expanded down here, we're going to make sure that when we iterate through the matrix, the next time we find one of those cells that's a, a one, we, won't, we will have flipped it to a zero, okay? So we'll never traverse the same island again, and then we can keep continuing, you know, to traverse our matrix, and we'll just update our maximum uh, as we see fit. So if we ever find a new island that has a greater area, we'll make sure to record it. So let's do the first thing, right? The first thing is we need a maximum variable to keep track of the maximum area we found. So we're gonna say int max equals zero. And now we said we have a matrix, right? So we just need to go through the entire matrix so we can definitely guarantee that we find the maximum area of any island. So we're gonna have a for loop int i equals zero, where i is less than grid dot length, i plus plus. And again, it's a matrix, so we also need to go through all the columns. So we need a nested for loop, so for int j equals zero, while well, j is less than grid of i dot length, j plus plus. And now we said any time we find an island, which is represented by one, we're gonna run a DFS. So let's do a quick conditional. So if grid of i j is equal to a one, what do we wanna do, right? So if we find a one anywhere in our matrix, we know we're at an island. So we wanna try and convert, or sorry, calculate the, the actual area of that given island, the one we're on, and update the max as necessary. So we can simply say max equals math.max of whatever our maximum is now, which again is just gonna start at zero, and the result of DFS of grid i, j, and that should be it. So the reason why we're passing this is we're passing the grid so that we can actually change the coordinates, and then we're passing i and j so we actually know the coordinates that we're on that we found the island, so that we can begin syncing all the neighbors of this coordinate. And now when this loop terminates, all we'll have to do, hopefully, if we write our DFS function correctly, is just return our max. So now let's return, or sorry, now let's write our actual DFS function. So we're gonna say public, it needs to return an integer, right? It's gonna return the maximum area of an island, or just the area of the island that we're currently on. And we're gonna say DFS, and we're gonna say it takes a matrix that represents our grid, and it takes an integer i and an integer j. So the first thing I wanna do here is basically just check if we're in bounds, right? Because any of our recursive calls can eventually jump out of the matrix. So let's just check that first. So we could say is if i is less than zero, meaning we've gone above the grid, or i is greater than or equal to grid.length, 
that means we've gone below the grid. 4j is less than zero, meaning we've gone to the left of the grid. This will be left for you guys. Um, or j is greater than or equal to grid of i dot length, meaning we've gone out of bounds of the current row, right? Or the other scenario is if we're just on a zero, we don't really care. So we'll say, or if grid of i j is not equal to one, then we don't really care, right? So we'll just say return zero. So if we've gone out of bounds or the cell that we're on is a zero, we don't actually want to consider uh, adding to the area for whatever cell we're on. It's probably better to actually say equals to zero here because that's technically, or usually I feel like it's easier to understand positive as opposed to negative logic. So now if we don't execute or trip this if statement, we're definitely on a cell that is in the matrix, in the bounds of it, and it's a one. So what we wanna do, like we said, is we don't wanna double count things. So we're gonna set the current cell, so grid of ij equal to a zero. So we don't end up counting it somehow uh, later on in our loop here. And once we've actually flipped it to a zero, what we need to do now is we know again that the cell we're on is a one. So we need a count. So we're gonna say int count equals one. And now what we need to do is we need to actually add all of the areas of its neighbor. Okay, so we're gonna say count plus equals, and now we're gonna traverse all the cardinal directions of it. So above it, below it, to the left of it, and to the right of it. So we're gonna say DFS of i plus one j, and we also need to pass the grid. So grid i plus one j, so we're gonna say count plus equals DFS grid i minus one j, uh, count plus equals DFS grid i j plus one, count plus equals DFS grid i j minus one, now, once we've actually done all those recursive calls, we just need to return our count. And so hopefully once this entire nested for loop runs, we will have called DFS on any of the ones we encounter. We will be counting the max or the area of that island that we're on, and we will be updating max accordingly. And then finally, we will return our maximum. So let's make sure that this works. Awesome, and it does. If that was helpful, guys, be sure to leave this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. Um, if there's anything I can do to help you guys, be sure to leave a comment below or otherwise consider joining the Discord channel. I'll talk to you guys next time.